Hello everyone, this is Shannon for Waffle Flower Crafts. In today's video, we are going to create a really fun interactive card that has a swinging pirate and a treasure box full of gems. All the images for today's cards are from the Party Time Stamp Set. This is the stamp set here. If you get the combo, you get the stamps. And in the cloud storage bag, you will also get the matching dies on their own magnetic sheet in the back. So I'm going to start today by stamping a mouse and a map. Now I want the mouse to appear that he's holding that map, so I'm positioning the map, the mouse where I want him, and then I place the map where it would be, and then I'm going to fold my Misty over, and the Misty will pick up the map and the mouse, and I just carefully remove the mouse, and now I have my map in the right spot for this A2 panel 110 pound white cardstock. I just inked up that map and stamped it in Memento Tuxedo Black. Then I quickly made a mask by stamping the map on a post-it note, then fussy cut it out, and now I'm placing it right over my stamped map. Then I'll grab my mouse here, position him so it looks like he's holding that map, and then ink him up and stamp him in Tuxedo Black as well. So I am going to Copic color these, but I'm going to do this off camera just to save some time, and we'll really focus on creating the scene and assembling this interactive card today. So I'm going to start by creating my background scene. I have a piece of contact paper mask here. I just want that straight edge to create the sky. And then I die cut some contact paper with the scenery die that creates this beautiful scalloped edge. And then I'm going to ink blend along that scalloped edge with tumbled glass distress ink. And this will create the look of clouds. I'll just kind of reposition it multiple times, continue to blend right on the very edge of that cloud line. And this will just be a really simple solution to really create a nice layered sky. Once I finish ink blending a couple places, I made a little mistake, so I just kind of erase it with my mono sand eraser, and that kind of removes all the inks. It's a handy, handy tool. And that will complete my sky. Once I've got that done, I'll kind of mask it with that same um, contact paper that I used earlier, right along the edge of the skyline. And now I've created some masks out of post-it note for my mouse and my map to protect them. These are die cut with the matching dies so that leaves a nice border around them when I ink blend and create that background. That's just to make the mouse and the map consistent with my other images that are going to be in my card. So everything has that white border around it. Now I'm going to ink blend my C. I'm starting with Mermaid Lagoon and just ink blending the bottom portion of my C, kind of where the sea would meet or the ocean would meet the beach. And then my upper portion closer to the sky, making it a little bit darker, so I am using a blueprint sketch here, so just blending that top portion. So I'm just carefully blending this over. I did put another piece of contact paper down. Um, below to kind of mask off where the sand is going to be. So I have contact paper at the top covering the sky, protecting the sky, and contact paper below protecting where the sand is going to be. Once I finish the ocean, I then reposition my bottom piece of contact paper to protect my ocean, and now I'm going to start to ink blend my sand. I'm starting with Antique Linen Distress Ink, and I'm just going to ink blend that whole stretch of sand here with this color just to kind of make it a little bit more of that tan and, and uh, sandy beach color. Once I finish with that light color, I'm going to move to a slightly darker tan. This is tea dye, and I'm going to ink blend where the sand meets the, the ocean and just blend along there, creating a nice gradation on this sand. And once I finish that, I'm going to add some splatters. Now I'm, I've, I'm using tea dye again. I just smushed it down onto my water medium mat, mixed it with a little bit of water, and then with the paintbrush, I kind of tap the paintbrush with my finger to release some of that liquid ink, and that creates the look of little pebbles or sand. Just is a really cool look. Just want to make sure that you cover up your areas that you've already ink blended, otherwise you're going to get ink everywhere. So I did keep my masks on, and then I decided for further protection, I grabbed a piece of white cardstock to kind of protect it as well. Once I finish those little splatters, I can remove all the masks, and my background panel is done. Now it's time to start working on creating the swinging pirate. The swinging mechanism is actually pretty easy to create. You need two of these donut pieces. I use the tag hole reinforcer die to create them, and then you'll need a brad. Then you'll need a piece of cardstock to connect the mouse to those donut pieces. I created my own rope here, just cut the cardstock very thin, and then colored it with Copics to make it look like a rope. Then I need to decide how long that rope needs to be, so I kind of position my mouse and, and the rope together, and then marked off the top of my background, 
and now I'm going to snip it off but I do need to snip it a little bit shorter to compensate for the width of the uh, donut piece. I'm going to sandwich the two donut pieces uh, the rope between these two donut pieces so I'm going to grab my liquid glue here glue the very top part of the rope to one donut piece and then sandwich it with the top uh, donut piece. You want to make sure though when you're doing this that you don't block the hole of the donut. Now I'm ready to attach the mouse to the rope so I'm just going to grab my liquid glue here again and add a little bit of glue to the back side of the rope or to the front of the rope where the rope and the mouse meet. Now I need to make the hole for the brad on my background panel so I'm positioning the mouse where I want him to go, take my pencil, trace out that little center opening on my donut piece and then I'll use my hole punch here to punch that hole out. My hole punch is a pretty small punch so I'm punching it several times to make that hole a little bit bigger so that the brad can fit through. Once I've punched that I then can grab my swinging pirate and then feed the brad through the donut pieces and the background panel and then once I fed them through I'll just fan those out and that was almost completes my swinging pirate but as you can see here I'll give it a couple swings or turns here and the pirate doesn't swing too well that's because the pirate needs a little bit of weight to really swing before I address that I'm just gonna quickly glue his sword onto his hand and now I'm gonna grab my weight so my weight here is going to be a penny you could use a washer instead and then I'm going to add some adhesive to the uh, front of that penny and then I'll tuck that penny right behind that mouse and just that little bit of weight will help that mouse swing so well. Now you can really see why that background mouse couldn't have just been die cut and stuck down because that little dimension of cardstock would have prevented the swinging mouse from swinging. So now I went ahead and die cut five leaves out of some green cardstock using a leaf die from the greenery die set. I just and now ink blending the very edges of these leaves with the pine needles distress ink and this just kind of makes the leaves look a little bit more realistic now I need these leaves to cover up mainly that brad that's why I have these leaves here so I positioned two on the right and now I'm carefully positioning some leaves on the left to definitely make sure that I cover up that brad I grabbed a frame that I created here from 110 pound white cardstock using the rainbow panel die and now I'm just positioning that over the leaves the, this frame is going to kind of hold everything in place and really kind of like clean the edges up on this card i grabbed a couple pieces of micro pore tape and pushed it down on the leaves in the frame to hold everything in place and now i'm just carefully picking up the leaves and adding a little bit of glue to glue the leaves together and to glue most importantly where the leaves intersect with the frame so i'm not removing them completely from the micro pore tape yet just kind of lifting the edges up and adding a little bit of glue here and there to make sure all those leaves are stuck to the frame and stuck to each other where they overlap once I'm done gluing, I'll grab a pair of scissors and just trim off the overhang here. And that will actually complete, complete the front frame for my card. I went ahead and die cut with that same frame die from the rainbow panel die set, um, two A2 panels of white craft foam. And I left the inside negative piece just to keep those frames nice and square. And now I'm taking these frames and placing them over that background panel right where that brad is so I can cut out and remove that section where the frame is overlapping with the brad. So once I've done one, I'll just repeat this process for the second frame here. Just place that trimmed uh, frame right on top of the untrimmed one, use my pencil to mark it, and then just cut that section out. Now I'm ready to glue these frames together. First, I'll glue the cardstock frame with the leaves directly down to one of the craft foam frames, still leaving that negative piece intact again to keep everything nice and square. And then I'll glue the second frame to the first two. Once I allowed everything to dry, I now can carefully remove that, those negative pieces. The reason why we need the craft foam frames here is we need to add some dimension to compensate for that thickness of the brad. So now I'm going to kind of start to put these things together. The first thing I'm going to do is glue this frame down onto my background panel. So again, I'm using my liquid adhesive here, adding some glue, and then flipping this over and just lining up the edges here. And as you can see, that leaf covers up that brad, so it's really well hidden with those leaves. Now I'm going to start adding some of my other images. I have this cute little captain here with his hook. Just glue him down. I also have this cute little parrot. He goes up in the tree. And now my treasure chest. As you can see, 
here I stamped the treasure chest twice, colored the lid on one and the bottom on the other. Now I'm going to cut the lid away from the bottom, but to, I am leaving a white border, which means some of the bottom is still remain, still visible. So I'm just going to take a white gel pen here and just cover up those few little ink points where you could still see the bottom. I'll repeat that process for the bottom part of my treasure chest, fussy cut that out first, and then once I'm done fussy cutting it out and cu using the white gel pen, I'll add some foam tape to the back. I'm going to stick down my bottom half first. Once I stick that down to my card base, I'm going to grab some Nouveau Crystal do Drops and just squeeze some out, and now I'm going to start filling the treasure chest. This is the really fun part. I have some gold sequins here. I'm going to lay down some of those first. This is basically like my gold coins but this does provide a nice foundation for all my tiny little gems. Once I have those gold coins down, I'll grab, I'll squeeze out some more Nouveau drops, and then I'll place some of my gems here inside or on top of those gold coins. This, this little pack of gems has a couple sizes, so after I get some of the bigger ones in place, I'll then glue some of the smaller ones right along the very edge of the treasure chest, just so it looks like that treasure chest is really full, in fact, practically spilling over. And then, just to push that thought a little further, I did squeeze out some more Nouveau drops down at, in the sand at the very base of the treasure chest and placed uh, one of the gold sequins and then a few more of those colorful gems down there as well. Once I have this treasure chest pretty full, I'm going to grab my lid and place it on top. Again, my lid has a little bit of foam tape on it too, so its, it's height can kind of compensate for the, all that thickness of the gems. And then I'll finish fine tuning by adding a couple more gems here just so it looks like it's really full and you can really see all the details. And I'm almost done with this card. The last thing I need to do is just adhere it onto my A2 top folding card base turned on its side. And once I stick that down, my card is actually all done. And I'll hold the card up to the camera so you can get a good look at all the details in this card. I really love how it turned out. The swinging mechanism works so well. That pirate really swings very freely. And I just love this action with these images. I think it works perfectly. Such a fun, fun card. I wanted to also show you, kind of give you a close-up look of how this brad looks once it's glued um, or I should say the panel is glued to the card base. Yes, that fanned part of the brad is right up against the card base, but that's okay. The brad is not what's moving here to make this pirate swing. It's that donut shape cardstock is what needs to move freely to make that pirate swing. So I just wanted to show that real quick. But overall, I just love how this card turned out. It's so fun. I love that treasure chest full of treasure. And I think anybody who receives this card will be so excited to play with it and just see all the details in it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you want any more information on the products I use, please visit Waffle Flower. And you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.